Joining us now is our own ABC News Live Dayside anchor and now the author of a new book, The Sleep Fix, where she provides easy and practical solutions to fix your sleep struggles once and for all. Miss Diane Macedo, it is so good to see oh, you so again back see in you studio. Too. You're looking so restful, like you're actually getting good night's sleep. Is that so? Even though we do want to show the little girl, right? Because I imagine this is your second child. Yeah. I imagine having a newborn even though I'm sure you're not really asleep in that picture, but it looks like you're getting a lot of sleep. How is that with uh, working with your with your sleep habits? Um, the, the irony of releasing a sleep book when you have an infant is <laughs> nobody is rested during this stage. But the difference is I'm now, if I'm not sleeping now at night, it's usually because my baby needs me, not because I'm laying in bed staring at the ceiling and I can't sleep. And it's good to have that actual practical rationale and explanation. But I know that this came from your own struggles, your own personal journey with having a difficult time falling asleep. Kind of give us a sense of that. It sure did. So for years, I had difficulty falling asleep and staying asleep. And for a while, I just kind of dismissed it as, oh, well, that's just me. That's just how I am. I'm a bad sleeper. But eventually it got so bad, I really couldn't ignore it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I started trying all the typical sleep tips that you read about in articles all the time, and none of it worked for me. In fact, I felt like I kept getting worse and worse. Um, eventually, I started on Ambien at the encouragement of my doctor. And for a while, that was like magic. And then eventually that stopped working, mm -hmm. too. And that was kind of the wake-up call for me, where my doctor just said, you know, you can just take more Ambien if you want, but I decided that's not the path for me. So I kind of turned into a sleep nerd. I started reading all of these sleep textbooks, books written by clinicians who actually treat people with sleep problems. And putting that stuff into practice, I started sleeping better on the overnight shift in only three weeks. And so I just kind of thought, well, why isn't anybody talking about this stuff? And then that sent me down a whole sleep rabbit hole where I explored lots of other issues, talked to experts all over sleep science, and ended up putting it all together like this big sleep puzzle. And that's essentially what the sleep fix is. And I don't think that I even need to ask this question because I personally struggle prior to reading the book, that, <laughs> by the way. And months before, as you know, we were talking because when I knew you had this book coming up, I just started asking you for, for all of the tips. But for our viewers at home, explain what some of the common habits are that lead uh, to people having such a, a difficult time falling asleep. So I think there's a misconception that if someone has trouble sleeping, they must have really bad sleep habits. And often the clinicians that I speak to say their typical insomnia patient is the opposite. It's someone who comes in and says, you know, I have no idea why I'm not sleeping. I quit caffeine, mm -hmm. I'm doing the teas, I'm taking baths at night, I see no screens at all within three hours of bed, et cetera, et cetera. And these doctors tell me that when they hear that, it's a red flag and they cannot say with almost certainty that person has insomnia. Because even though these things are individually good for sleep, if you try them all, and if, they, if those things make you think a lot and worry a lot about your sleep, they can actually make your sleep worse. And this often comes into play in the bedtime routine leading up to bed, where we do all these things we feel we're supposed to do instead of doing things we enjoy. And so even if those things individually in theory are good for sleep, if you're doing them solely because I feel like I have to do this and now let's see if I sleep, it puts your brain into work mode and now you're all revved up and you can't sleep. So sometimes it's really about stepping back and choosing the right sleep solutions to focus on and kind of letting the rest go away. If you used to sleep fine when you just watch TV and go to bed, Go back to watching TV. Right. TV is not the problem. And, and we talk about the overactive mind quite often, yes. right? But in your book, you mentioned constructive worrying. Explain what that is. So I also call this a worry list or a brain dump, but it's, it's a simple exercise involving a notebook and great for that feeling when you go to bed and you feel like your thoughts are just racing. Take a notebook, divide a page down the center. On the left-hand side, you write down all of your worries, your thoughts, anything that's on your mind. On the right-hand side, you write down just the very next step to resolving that issue. You don't even have to know the ultimate solution. You can just write, call Lindsay about X because mm -hmm. I know you know more about that than I do or research it or accept and move on if it's something that's out of your control. And when you can't think of anything else that's on your mind, you're done. And what this does is it gives your brain an opportunity to process those thoughts and feelings and worries from the day so that you don't have to do it in bed. So bed is not the only option to, to process those feelings. And if you do this enough, your brain starts to form a new association that, oh, this is where we stay awake and worry, not when my head hits the pillow. Because often, if you have insomnia for long enough, it becomes your bed becomes a cue for wakefulness. And this exercise helps to separate that. And I felt like I did it for about two weeks, and I 
did not need the notebook anymore. Mm -hmm. And what clinicians told me that I interviewed for the book was that they generally say two to three weeks to their patients and your brain just kind of starts doing it automatically. And then you don't even need the notebook. Your brain just kind of gets the memo. Head on pillow means it's time to sleep, not it's time to think about everything. And so you can essentially retrain your mind, which is good to know yes. that that is an option. And then you also talk a lot about kind of debunking these certain myths, the idea of, of carbs being bad, right? Or reading on your iPad, or a lot of times people, and this is something that I would do, I'd fall asleep and I felt like I have to stay in bed. Right? Yes. You suggest just if you're awake, get out of bed and do something else. I feel like that should be the golden rule. If you find yourself in bed long enough to feel frustrated, get out of bed, do something enjoyable and relaxing, and go back to bed when you feel sleepy again. And I say enjoyable because a lot of times you'll hear things like, read an instruction manual or do something really boring. But boring things can also foster frustration. And so even if it works in the moment, now you have something else to fear when you go to bed and you think, oh gosh, I really hope I don't wake up this time or I'm gonna have to read that damn manual again. And so do something enjoyable, relaxing, and that, that helps wakefulness become less of a threat if you learn to enjoy your wake time. And that means when you do wake up at night, you're now not all hyped up because so much of what fuels our insomnia is our flight our, and flight response. It's our fear of being awake. And if you can do anything you can do to sort of overcome that helps to move insomnia in the right direction where you start sleeping better and better, you develop more sleep confidence and that then makes you sleep better and better. And you can reverse what feels like a downward spiral starts to turn in the opposite direction. Sleep improvement, but get sleep improvement. Well, Diane, we thank you on behalf of insomniacs like myself, um, because you know a lot of times people want a book, right? For it's, it's enjoyable, it's a novel, but this is something that I feel, and I don't want to oversell, but that people need, that people are gonna find, oh my goodness, at long last, I can get some rest and some sleep. So thank you for that. The Sleep Fix is now available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.